another sad one i guess in terms of the economy concerning when it when all things concerning covid is this story from the guardian that says we're going to lose maybe 70 percent of our clubs in the uk if lockdown continues until september or something like just frightening again frightening because there's been no solution there's been no noise from the government as to what they're going to do i'm assuming they're probably going to just use whatever idea the nighttime initiative the nighttime whatever organization puts out i think they put out a report or some sort of idea on what they want to do and what they think is a great idea in terms of keeping the nightclubs and the night or the nightlife scene afloat so i'm sure the government is just going to take their plan and just add a bit bit to it and just kind of roll that out but there's been no hearing we heard nothing from the government about what they're going to do how they're going to support the clubs what the future of the clubs is going to be there's no there's been no word of kind of social distance initiative to kind of see if that works nothing we heard absolute diddly squat and this kind of article from the guardian confirms it, it says we lost the love uk nightclubs using covid to reassess the scene um it says da, 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 and this i think it's talking about the cause and their new places that everyone's loving for the most part i've seen on social but it says the following it says in front of an old mechanic workshop in tottenham a collection of Tre a collection of trestle tables and makeshift bar and a pair of plum trees are being uh, battered by unseasonal downfall as remnants of a tropical storm soak north london the wilted greenery and sudden uh, tables are part of costa del tottenham a tongue-in-cheek temporary outdoor venue in tottenham hill which Stuart glenn and his business partners have created an empty space next to the warehouse uh, uh, when this the warehouse is their nightclub the cause which is obviously a good little spot. I've seen a few parties, actually. There was a cup party on the weekend that did, actually, at his place. Um, essentially, what they're doing is mostly table service. So there's no dancing. Um, you book tables, I think, from two to six, or two to six people, I think, something along that kind of range. Um, tickets have to be paid for in advance, contract tracing, all that good stuff. And, you know, it's a good way for um, them to basically keep themselves afloat, have some income coming in, book some DJs, and um, obviously street food vendors, all that good stuff. But, of course, you know, they're running at limited capacity. The course probably has 500 capacity in there alone. They, I think they bought another space next to it as well. So they're obviously missing out on a lot of money, but at least they have the option to do this. That's already good. Um, and again, it's a great um, kind of initiative they're pushing forward. It says here, wearing a Hawaiian shirt and shorts combination, a fedora and a football scarf. Glenn is not exactly dressed for the weather, but his outfit, outfit, his outfit seems optimi op screams optimism. He and the rest of his um, estimated 1.3 million workers who make a living from the nightlife sector have needed that quality in abundance uh, after COVID-19 abruptly stopped the party in March. He said, we built a whole area not knowing quite what was going on. We adapted and took a whole new team. We went from being a high volume nightclub to suddenly doing table service, which is much better bit of a freak especially in the uk because table service isn't a big thing here maybe in kind of some glitzy you know soho nightclubs but for the most part there's no table service we don't really run that kind of game so to kind of suddenly shift your model to that is must be weird but again i think it's probably a little bit more manageable to do um more so than kind of running a regular club i'd imagine so i'm not too sure um no for its um righteous club nights such as adonis the causes new cost of the whole setup is about relaxed socially distance fun with street food and calmer music we didn't want to be a club with constraints he said which i agree glenn knows he's one of the lucky ones the cause had the outdoor space it could develop michael kill the chief executive of the nighttime industries association which i mentioned previously estimates that up to 70 percent of clubs could close by the end of september 70 percent and we've heard nothing from the government zero diddly squat diddly zero from the government which again that's why i have i don't have an issue with some of these promoters who are going out and doing these illegal events now would i go no would i invite my friends to go no if you go will i ever meet you again no but i don't really have a problem with these people putting on their events because for sure for real like if you run a promotions company if you run a nightclub like what the hell are you going to do like really They've given you no idea what's coming, what's coming next, no roadmap, no nothing. And legitimately, the Nighttime Association, Nighttime Industry Association is saying 70% of them are going to close. And they speak to these clubs, yeah, daily. The clubs probably going to them seeking information. It's mad. So on Thursday, the the N NTIA um, warmed up a financial Armageddon for its members with 750, 754,000 jobs at risk due to an ongoing uncertainty about nightclubs and venues will be, re be able to reopen according to the ntia survey 360 businesses three quarters um expect uh to make at least half of their workforce redundant by september and more than half will not survive more than two months without financial assistance keel said there may 
there are more than 1,640 1, clubs in the UK. If you take 70% of those away, it's going to be devastating. That's more than true. The heritage has been built over the decades of work and effort, and the government hasn't taken the time to invest, reinvest, sustain, and make sure it's protected. A government sp spokesman acknowledged it was a difficult time for nightclubs, but said that throughout the pandemic, nightclubs had access to state support, including business rate tariffs, tax referrals, and job retention schemes, and billions in paid loans and grants. But that's not enough, man. And again, not everyone is able to get that. Um, that world's going to run dry sooner rather than later. And again, they have they had no roadmap in place. That, that's, that's the thing. It makes like it's just frightening to see the seventy percent thing. That's the thing that really caught me off guard. Seventy percent of clubs could close by the end of September. It's just insane, man. And again, nothing's been done for it. Um, no idea what to do. And that, not, so that's, you can't blame some of these events, these legal events. You really cannot blame them, man. They're trying their best in these really weird times. And again, I, I just, I just don't know what the way. The, I, I don't know what the way forward is. I would like to see a little bit more. Um, um, iteration going on about social distance raves and events running some trial events here and there asking people for, to volunteer to go to them maybe i saw some new system that they're kind of using where they kind of have these outdoor spray machine things that they use right where they kind of disinfect people as they're walking in track and tracing of course all that good stuff but do something man give us some hope because we can't be going on living like this man imagine you're a club owner like imagine if you actually opened the club in march what you must be feeling like at the moment imagine just imagine like utterly bizarre man. utterly bizarre